Victoria's Parliament will establish a second inquiry examining the state government's decision to walk away from the Commonwealth Games. Crossbench MPs have voted in favour of an opposition motion to investigate the axing of the 2026 event. The Andrews government had earlier attempted to thwart the inquiry by having it referred to the Order General. However, the Auditor had already confirmed or opened an investigation. The Auditor General will focus particularly on the financial and auditing aspects of the Commonwealth Games debacle. While the Upper House, uh, which Georgie will talk on in a moment, the Upper House will look more closely at governance issues, including the full range of issues that went on, but a broader range of problems that went on and caused the Commonwealth Games debacle to occur. For more on this, let's bring in the Victorian Opposition Leader, who you saw there, John Suto, live from State Parliament. Thanks for your time. So what will this inquiry Next be able to do that the Auditor can't? So this inquiry, Tom, which really represents a watershed in Victorian politics for our national audience, it's very rare that in the upper house of the Victorian Parliament all non-government parties and MPs will come together to vote as a bloc. And that's what happened here today. Everybody's that concerned about the financial incompetence and the damage, not just to Victoria's reputation, but the damage done to Australia's reputation internationally because of the debacle around the cancellation of the Commonwealth Games. That united a very wide-ranging group of MPs in the Upper House to come together to do this. And the reason why it's important to add to what the Auditor-General is going to do, Tom, is that the Auditor-General will really focus on more financial aspects, costings and the like, which, which really are so controversial and contentious at the moment because we're all trying to prize out of the Andrews government, and in particular the Deputy Premier Jacinta Allen, how they committed to the Games without proper due diligence and then how it went from a budgeted amount of $2.6 billion to something like $7 billion, which Jacinta Allen refuses to answer. Mm. So the financial aspects will really be done by the Auditor-General. But there's also, Tom, again, a broader point for all of our viewers about how does something like this occur and our concerns and what prompted our desire for an upper house inquiry was what sort of pressure was put to bear on stakeholders, on agencies of government, on public servants to cover up what could have been and what obviously were shortcomings that would have exposed okay. the lack of due diligence in this in the first place. On the auditor aspect, and you mentioned the financials, if it is found to be accurate that the new cost is on the order of six to seven billion dollars, at that point, was it the right call to axe the Games, given the, the state's financial position? Let me preface it by saying that no credit is due to the Andrews government for this mess. But I will say, if somebody said to me, Tom, you've got to be Premier from this day forward, and I looked at the disaster that confronted me as a new Premier, then obviously I would have made the financially responsible thing to say, well, we can't afford it, given the cost of living crisis we're facing, power prices going up through the roof in Victoria, uh, taxes and charges, schools facing new taxes, all of those imposts that are already being levied on Victorians. Of course that's what you would do, but let's remember the real reason people are so frustrated and frankly quite angry at this latest debacle is that how did we end up here? You know, how did we end up committing to a Games we obviously, through our own government here in Victoria, didn't know was going to cost us so much? And how was it that um, the Gold Coast in Birmingham could hold Commonwealth Games at under $2 billion, but the Andrews government could only hold it for 6 or $7 billion? They're questions we would like to probe. Presumably, the, the, a lot of analysis suggests that you know, Melbourne Games might have been a lot cheaper. When does it get too expensive? If, if we could you know, host the Games in Melbourne at $3 billion or so, with $4 billion, would that be OK? Well, I guess you would have to look at what the multiplier and wider economic benefits. There are obviously economic benefits that go with holding a successful Commonwealth Games, like any global event. But for us, we took the view at the time, relying on what the Victorian government was telling all of us here in Victoria that the Games could be held for $2.6 billion. And we don't have, Tom, visibility into all of the advice and costings. In fact, the government never took us and Victorians more generally into its confidence. And I will tell our viewers that some eight or nine weeks ago in the state budget, the Andrews government was actually telling us that the Games were going to cost $2.6 billion. So it was a surprise to all of us that it had gone from $2.6 billion in late May to $6 or $7 billion now. So if you could have stuck to those numbers of around $2.6 billion, allowing for the fact that there's been some movement in prices, but that it was being held in 
regional Victoria, then okay. that, that was a very sensible and good opportunity. Before we go, a lot today or this week in Federal Parliament around The Voice. I know that your party at a state level has a free vote, in the, if you like, but what's your position on the Indigenous Voice to Parliament referendum? Are you going to be supporting it personally? Yeah, I still, I still haven't reached a final point, simply, Tom, because I've just got a lot on my plate here in Victoria. It's a very important national discussion, but I, I am leading a team, Tom, and our complete focus is on the cost of living crisis, on the Commonwealth Games debacle. There are big planning reforms. There are enormous issues confronting uh, the Victorian mm. people, and my primary responsibility is on those issues. But, I, but Tom, but look, are I you will going make an some... announcement closer to yeah, the date of any room. You will. OK. I will make an announcement, but for what me, you, what? I'm just, I'm, I want to demonstrate mm. to the Victorian people that I'm focused on state issues and my responsibility as a state leader. At a state level, your party eventually supported the treaty and truth-telling elements of the Uluru Statement of the Heart for Victoria. What do you make of the concerns federally on that? Is, is that a bit overblown? Is, is treaty not something to be afraid of? No one knows quite what treaty is intended, even here in Victoria. You know, there are different models of what a treaty might look like, and I wasn't in the parliament last term, um, but nothing's come before us as a parliament. And the Andrews government in the last two weeks, for reasons you might appreciate, Tom, has been throwing all manner of issues uh, before us to try and distract attention from budget blowouts and, and the Com Games debacle. So we haven't heard anything specific. Uh, there was some general support in the last parliament for a treaty-making authority, but beyond that, we don't have any details about anything. All right, so you're weighing that up as well. We need to leave it there, but John Pazuto, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Pleasure.